What's up motorheads and welcome back to Gearbox Pizza. So the EV landscape, well it's getting pretty nutty out there. Man, can it be confusing and just sort of hard to keep up, but worry not. Your pals here are fixing to keep you up to date in this new kind of crazy electric world. So before we get all into it, I just wanted to give a huge ass thanks and a shout out to our small but fierce posse of subscribers. They are amongst the coolest cats in the barn and hey, there is plenty of room and the water's warm. So yeah, go for it, hit that sub button. Not even joking, it'll totally make my day. All right, so we're gonna start off with Tesla and I mean, honestly, Elon and his pals, well, they're sort of the reason we're in this whole EV boom in the first place. So why not start with Tesla? All right, so check this out, Panasonic, well, apparently they've developed an advanced prototype battery specifically for Tesla that, and get this, it's gonna have five times the capacity as a standard battery. Yep, five times. Oh, on top of all that, it's gonna cost half as much to make. So it might sound a bit crazy and look, it just might be, but look, battery breakthroughs, they're out there. And with this much potential money to be made, you can just imagine how much R&D is being done. But yeah, I mean, this could be our ticket to either mega long range cars, I mean like thousand mile plus cars, or like much, much lighter cars. I mean, if the battery only needs to be 20% of the size to give you the same range as we have now, well, I mean, sign me up. All right, next up, let's talk a little bit about superchargers. So Elon and co, well, they're changing things up a little bit. So what was once a two tier system, well, it's gonna be a four tier system now, so you can choose your price point depending on how quickly you want your car charged. All right, I'm gonna have to look into this a little bit more because there's, I mean, there's gotta be limits, right? I mean, what if you're that dude waiting in line for a top off and everybody's just charging very slowly? I mean, well, look, if that's the case, just fire up that gearbox playlist and we'll keep you company. All right, so how about that Roadster? Well, so there's only a few weeks left for Elon to come through on his promise that we're gonna see this little rocket ship on that famed Nürburgring by the end of 2021. But it's not looking great, but man, what's a dude gotta do to see this thing churn out some hot laps, am I right? Oh, and what about this SpaceX package? You know where it might actually get hovering capabilities? So not sure I'm buying into all that hype, but Look, there's talk about these boosters that'll actually pop out from behind the license plate and get you an extra three tons of thrust. All right, yeah, that's cool. Okay, last little Tesla nugget here is the upcoming smaller hatchback Model 2 that's apparently on the way. I mean, the word on the street is that this little fella could come in at a cool 25 grand, which if true, could really make this thing like the everyman Tesla. We've heard a 2023 date for this thing, but yeah, I'm thinking this is very unlikely considering how delayed other models are. I mean, I'm looking at you, Senor Cybertruck. However, we've heard rumors that there's a prototype putting around out there in a factory in China, but look, for now, I don't know, we'll see. Expect more information on this soon. So Rivian, yeah, I mean, there's that whole IPO thing, which I don't know, seems a little bit rich, but then again, what do I know? Um, if you're looking for financial advice, well, I mean, you're probably not gonna find all that much here. So anyway, in other news, as it turns out, Ford and Rivian have decided not to partner up for this joint venture EV collab sort of thing. Nope, I mean, it sounded like they were planning on some sort of Lincoln Rivian luxury model, but yeah, I mean, that appears to be all but dead now, which is, I don't know, it's probably fine either way. However, Ford does still own a 12% stake in Rivian, which after the IPO, it's worth like 10 bill. Also, if you're looking for more Rivian info, well, look no further, my friends. Check out our other Rivian videos by all means. All right, canoe. So here's a little update on what's quickly becoming our favorite EV here at Gearbox Pizza. Yeah, I mean, there's just a whole lot of love for this little jelly bean. There is just too much to like here, and I think they've got a real shot at winning the hearts and minds of the general public. I mean, whether it's for like delivery vans or these like luxury sprinter people movers or that hippie van life crew, I don't know, we're kind of seeing a lot of potential for this little tugboat of an EV. Anyway, so Canoe has announced that they're gonna be moving their headquarters out of Torrance, California and setting up shop all the way over there in Oklahoma. Oklahoma, all right. 
That, plus some facilities in Arkansas, may carve out as much as a hundred million bucks in all kinds of incentive-based payouts. I mean, hell, I might even consider moving to Arkansas for that. Johnny, what are you talking? Come on, ain't nobody moving to Arkansas. All right, move on. All right, so a few general notes of interest, and we'll start with this. Canoe has selected Panasonic to be their battery supplier. No surprise there. And what else we got? So from the end of the second quarter to the end of the third quarter, Canoe actually increased its workforce by 22%. And that means they got like 800 employees. That's, that's a good sign. That is a very good sign. Lastly, Canoe, well, they've got about $415 million in cash as of the end of Q3. All right, so Lucid. And look, not a whole ton of Lucid news right now. Oh, except that Motor Trend. Well, they've named the Lucid Air as their 2022 car of the year. Even though it's 2021, I think, I don't know, it's been weird lately, man, right? I mean, sometimes, you guys, you guys forgetting what year it is too? I guess it's 2021, anyway. All right, look, just gonna throw this out there. I mean, Lucid Air, a little bit expensive for car of the year. I mean, this thing's like, what, 150 grand, all that? So, look, I mean, who is this car for? I mean, look, maybe I'm just bummed out that I can't afford one. Um, I don't know, maybe that's not it, I don't know. Anyway, so Lucid, with their Tesla beating range, well, they seem to be a real solid competitor to the Model S and we're, yeah, like, we're just excited to see if Lucid can actually ramp up production. All right, so BMW. Well, they just unveiled that BMW XM concept just the other day and look, we're not exactly sure how we feel about it. I mean, I believe it's the first fully developed car from the M division since the M1. So that part's cool. And look, I know it's only a concept, but I just don't know. I mean, I sort of want to like it, but there's something just a little off with it. So the front's, well, the front's pretty cool with that big ass kidney grill that lights up and, well, look, you go to the profile and things are a little bit different. Look, if you squint, doesn't it sort of just look like, I don't know, like a special edition Minecraft FJ Cruiser hybrid sort of thing? I don't know. Power wise, we're looking at 750 horse, which I think this makes it the most powerful BMW ever, right? <laughs> Anyways, keep your eyes peeled for an in-depth look at this beast in a future video. And look, on that note, why just make it easy on yourself? Just hit that sub button. If you just hit it, you're not gonna miss it. Look, everybody wins, you win, I win, everybody wins. And then you got this i7. And look, there's not a whole lot of information on this thing, but it just kind of looks to be an electric seven series. And I guess we can kind of take a cue from the i4 which is basically an electric four series Grand Coupe. So here you have it. It's an electric seven series, probably gonna be really good, I don't know. More info coming on that soon. Oh, and other news, the configurators are finally live for the i4 and the iX. So you can head over to the BMW USA, or whatever country you're at, and you can build these things and see all the options, see how you wanna make them, but watch out, cause these options sort of stack up and you're gonna get a little expensive here, but it's about time these things are available. Oh, and while you're here, we've actually done a couple in-depth videos on the i4 and the iX. Break it down, every option, every package, all that, so check them out. All right, let's talk Dodge. So, look, Dodge has announced some pretty big news. Check it. They're gonna be ending their muscle car lineup of the Challenger and the Charger to make room for some big boy EV models. And here is what we know so far. So they're planning to reveal their first electric muscle car concept next year. And it sounds like they're really set on defining the segment. I mean, I don't know, what does an electric muscle car look like? Or better yet, what does one sound like? Pretty curious to see what their interpretation of a true electric muscle car looks like. But there's also talk of this plug-in hybrid model that's gonna go into production by the end of 2022, which, I mean, it's cool, I guess, but I don't know, haven't we sort of just moved on from hybrids? I don't know. Oh, so something else that's kind of interesting. So electric Dodge vehicles will apparently be wearing the Fratzog logo. And if you don't know what that is, it's this throwback to this old logo they used to use like ages ago. That's basically this like triangle fancy looking sort of thing. And I, it's kind of an interesting branding move. I mean, I'm kind of digging it. It's cool. Let's do it. And sadly, well, look, oh, I 
don't know, maybe not sadly, but the current lineup of muscle cars will end production in 2024. Uh, yeah, it is sad. Damn it. I mean, the death of the internal combustion muscle car. I just, I never thought I'd say that sentence. Last but not least, we got this pretty sweet offering out of this Japanese automaker called Aspark. And look, I don't love the name, but they're calling this 1984 horsepower beast the owl oh and it's quick of course it's quick how quick well it's gonna hit 60 in 1.7 seconds for you so that's pretty quick anyway i mean don't expect to see these things flying by you on the freeway anytime soon i mean they're like they're only gonna make 50 of these things and i think that's okay because well this thing is expensive i mean stupid expensive staggeringly expensive at 3.2 million dollars a piece I mean, that puts this thing in Koenigsegg territory just about, right? So it's got 280 miles of range and a claimed top speed of like 250 miles, blah, 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 blah. Look, anyway, look, another hyper car that I'll never see, let alone drive. But I mean, look, all things equal, I'm glad they're making it. All right, so that wraps it up. No more news, guys. So you can take off, keep going, watch some other videos. You're all good. See ya.